Um, Cody passed in 2009, and, and as the love of her life, Stan, at any point during this, did you try to talk her out of it? No, not really. I think we had a great deal of confidence in her moral beliefs and her ability to make choices uh, in important situations. Um, I was surprised that she had the courage to make mm. this kind of a choice, but you know, my job was to help her. Mm. And just hearing your voice five years later, this is still pretty painful. Um, important. Um, yeah, I think you know we're proud of the story. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, like Brittany, I think she really made a story about living and getting the meaning as much as she could from life as an example for others. Um, there's a certain style that you have a certain meaning that you want to share. Um, and I think um, Cody's preference would have been a natural death. And that s snippet you shared actually was her preferred scenario. She had nearly passed away from infections and fevers multiple times, and I'd learned and worked with her on how to recover from those conditions. And we'd worked out with the doctor that that would be a relatively painless way to go. Mm. Um, so that was one of the preferred scenarios, and I think um, it was a part of the learning experience how death happens and how to be graceful about supporting it. So we really treasured every day. And I think in, in uh, another part of the movie, The Golden Summer kind of explained uh, the switch. And it was really fun for us to see that switch and be part of that framing of not being afraid of a disease that we didn't understand, but making the most of the meaning so celebrating, you know, flowers and uh, recipes and stories. Stan, you allowed these documentary cameras to capture these final moments of your wife's life. So let me just play one more scene. This is the scene in the end of the film when Cody is surrounded by loved ones before she takes the final dose. It is incredibly emotional. I just want our audience to see it. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. Never know, dear, how much I love you. What was that like? Well, it was nearly Christmas, and we had a really strong family tradition of uh, singing, uh, carols, and traditional songs. Uh, and a lot of family are quite musical, our daughters especially, so the harmony parts were celebrated. Um, so we didn't really, you know, like, I'm not, we didn't really plan the last, you know, scene in any way. We were just doing traditional things. We had a traditional fudge and popcorn ball and and we just decided that we would do some Christmas songs. Uh, so, so that was, um, and then we didn't pick that song intentionally. It was kind of hard. To remember the meanings of that, that particular verse. So we laughed and broke out into Jingle Bells <laughs> to recover and get back into the right spirit. And I think, you know, death is one of those, that's part of life. And so we did a really good job with our dog celebrating and, 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 and understanding that. 
And I think with Cody, it was much harder and much bigger. But to have her mother there and her father there, who were some of the most uncomfortable with the whole scenario, to be celebrating it with us, that was terrific. <laughs> so, you know, for in the sports analogy, that's a very difficult play. Uh, and from a school analogy, we were really worried about the final exam. But we all thought we got an A. <laughs> uh, so that was, uh, that was great. Oh, Stan, um, this is tough. <laughs> it's tough watching the film. It's tough talking to you. But I so appreciate you coming on. Um, since, since Cody's passing, I am so... Im I have such respect for you for, for five years later, having the strength to come on and tell her story. Um, what do you miss most about your wife? Well, we, you know, we think 